بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد In this lesson we're going to begin the seventh and final subchapter from كتاب الحج The authors say الباب السابع The seventh subchapter في العقيقة covering the issue of العقيقة وفيه مسائل And under this subchapter we're going to cover some issues There's going to be three issues in total that's going to be covered in this subchapter inshallah The first of these three issues, المسألة الأولى, تعريف العقيقة وحكمها ووقتها. This is what we're going to be speaking about in this lesson. The definition of عقيقة, its ruling, and its timing. But before we begin speaking about these matters, it's important to ask, why is عقيقة being discussed under the chapter of Hajj? What's the relationship between عقيقة and Hajj? The scholars who mention عقيقة under the chapter of Hajj, they do so because they say, that aqiqa has a greater resemblance to the issues covered in al-hajj than it has to any other chapter that's why it's more suitable to mention it under this chapter because it shares more similarities to the issues related to hajj than it does to any other chapter and in particular the issues related to al-hadi and udhiya so we covered previously al-hadi which is the sacrificial animal that's slaughtered by the pilgrim and the Udhiyah, which is the sacrificial animal that's slaughtered by the pilgrim and the non-pilgrim during the days of Hajj, after Eid al-Adha and the three days after it, Ayam al-Tashriq. So because we began speaking about the sacrificial animal, it's only suitable that we also include Aqiqah, because it's similar to the other two in the fact that all three are acts of worship involving slaughtering a sacrificial animal. Likewise, another similarity between the three is a person is sacrificing this animal in gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're doing so in appreciation and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his continual blessings and favors. Likewise, uh, the scholars also mention that with all three, they have to be from a certain category of animal, and that is Bahimatul An'am. In the Aqiqa, the Hadi, and the Udhiya, you can't slaughter any animal of your choice. You have to slaughter from this particular category of animal, which is Bahimatul An'am, the cattle. And likewise, they also mention that in all three, the animal that's going to be sacrificed has to be of a certain age and has to be void of certain defects. Of course, there's difference of opinion between these, but these are the reasons why they've said that Al-Aqiqah is more suited to be mentioned under the chapter of Hajj than it is to be mentioned in any other chapter. There are some scholars who said that it's 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 more suited for Aqiqah to be mentioned in the Kitab of Al-Nikah and you find it in the Kitab of Al-Nikah in some books because Aqiqah essentially is slaughtering an animal after a person has been blessed with a child. You cannot attain a child except through marriage. So it has to be after marriage. طيب, so this is why Aqiqah is mentioned under the chapter of Al-Hajj. So our mas'ala for today is going to be broken up into three parts. We're going to discuss the definition of Aqiqah, the ruling of Aqiqah, and the timing for offering Aqiqah. So we begin by speaking about Ta'rifu Al-Aqiqah, the definition of Aqiqah. Aqiqatu Lugatan and Shar'an. They're going to mention two definitions. The first one is the linguistic and the second is the legislative definition. As for the linguistic definition, they say مُشْتَقَّةٌ مِنَ الْعَقِّ وَهُوَ الْقَطْعُ The word عَقِيقَ is derived from الْعَقَّ عَقَّ يَعِقُّ عَقًّا or عَقَّ يَعِقُّ عَقًّا It means to cut. You're cutting something. And they, they differ with regards to what is being cut. Some of them they say it is the baby's hair that's going to be cut. And some of them say it is the sacrificial animal that's being cut. So عَقِيقَ in both cases comes from al-aqqa which is to cut something either the baby's hair is shaved or the sacrificial animal it's been slaughtered وهي تطلق في الاصل على الشعر الذي يكون على راس المولود حين الولادة the word aqiqa is originally used in reference to the hair that is found on the newborn baby's head when it is born so when a child is born the hair that it comes out from its mother's womb with on its head that hair is called aqiqa so the Arabs, they would say, Aqqa anhu. Aqqa anhu means he shaved the newborn baby's hair. That hair that was on his head was shaved. Aqqa, where we, we, we got qat'a from. 
shaved the baby's head. Or aqqa anhu can mean he slaughtered a animal, sacrificial animal, on behalf of the child. So this is the linguistic definition. Linguistic definition can either return back to the sacrificial animal or return back to the hair that is found on the newborn baby's head. As for the legislative definition, the definition of aqiqa according to the Sharia, the authors they say, ما يذبح للمولود يوم سابعه عند حلق شعره. It is that which is slaughtered on behalf of the newborn baby, يوم سابعه on its seventh day after birth, عند حلق شعره upon shaving its head. And we see the similarity, the resemblance between the linguistic definition. And the Shari definition. It's slaughtering an animal and there is shaving of the head that's taking place as well. طيب. The authors they say min walad ala walidihi. And this is from the rights of the child upon its father. So this is something which the father is held responsible for. This is something which the father is held responsible for. But the scholars they mention that if the father is absent or he refuses to slaughter the aqiqa or he gives the responsibility to someone else then it's permissible for someone else to slaughter on behalf of the child and this is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did he slaughtered on behalf of his grandsons hassan and hussein as reported by an nasai from the hadith of ibn abbas he said aqqa an-nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam 'anil hasan wal hussein shatain shatain the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he performed aqiqa on behalf of al hasan and hussein Two sheeps each. طيب. The second matter, حكم العقيقة, the ruling of عقيقة. The authors they say العقيقة سنة مؤكدة. The ruling of عقيقة is that it is سنة مؤكدة. It's a highly emphasized سنة. And this is the opinion held by the majority of the scholars from the Sahaba and the later generations. And inshallah, it is the stronger opinion because it combines between all of the evidences as we're going to see. So we have evidences which indicate that it's wajib and then we have other evidences which indicate that it is not wajib. So when you combine between the two evidences, we get this conclusion that it is sunnah mu'akkada. So the first evidence, لحديث سلمان بن عامر الضبي رضي الله عنه The hadith of Salman ibn Amr al-Dabbi رضي الله عنه قال, he said, سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying مع الغلام عقيقته with every child, he has an aqiqa that is to be slaughtered for him. فَأَهْرِيقُ عَنْهُ دَمَا So, shed blood on his behalf. Yani, uh, slaughter and a sacrificial animal on his behalf. وَأَمِيطُ عَنْهُ الْأَذَى And remove the other. The scholars, they explain that وَأَمِيطُ الْأَذَى Remove the other, the harm, as shaving the child's head. Shaving the child's head. So, with every child, with every boy, there is an aqiqa. So shed blood, this is an amr. This is an amr command that the Prophet is giving. So from this, if we were to look at this hadith alone, we'd say that it's wajib for us to perform aqiyah because the Prophet is commanding with it. وَأَمِيطُ عَنْهُ الْأَذَى And shave the, the head, yani remove the harm that's on the head, meaning shave the head. It's also another amr. And this hadith is reported by Bukhari, so it's an authentic hadith. So this is the first evidence. وَلِحَدِيثِ سَمُّرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَنَّ النَّبِيَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ قَالَ and due to the hadith of Samura that the Prophet ﷺ said, كل غلام رهينة بعقيقته تذبح عنه يوم سابعه ويسمى ويحلق رأسه. Every boy, every child has رهينة بعقيقته is held in ransom by his عقيقة. تذبح عنه يوم سابعه. The عقيقة is slaughtered on its seventh day. So that's how we, that's where we got the the, the definition from this hadith that the عقيقة is to be slaughtered on its seventh day. وَيُسَمَّ وَيُحْلَقُ رَأْسُهُ And it's given the name, the child is named on the seventh day also, and its head is shaven on the seventh day. So the seventh day of a child, this is where many of the events take place. Aqiqa, shaving the head, and also naming the child as well. And this hadith is reported by Ahmad, Abu Dawood, wa Tirmidhi, wa Nasai, wa Sahahahu al-Hakim, wa Wafaqahu al-Dhahabi, wa Sahahu al-Bani. It's an authentic hadith. The scholars, they differed with regards to what does this mean? رَهِينَةٌ بِعَقِيقَتِهِ كُلُّ غُلَامِ Every boy is رَهِينَةٌ is held in pledge or in ransom by his aqiqa. What does this part of the hadith mean? رَهِينَةٌ means محبوس. The child is going to be held and stopped. But stopped from what? 
stopped from what? This is what they differed concerning. Some of them, they said, is going to be stopped from interceding for his parents if the child dies young, if the parents do not perform aqiqa on his behalf. Because we have other evidences that say when a child dies young in its infancy, it intercedes for its parents. However, if the aqiqa is not performed for this type of child who dies in its infancy, it's not going to intercede for the parents. So that's what they said, held, withheld from intercession. And some of them said withheld from the effects of shaitan. Shaitan is not going to easily influence this child if the aqiqah is performed. But if the aqiqah is not performed, then the shaitan can easily influence the child. And some of them, they said, there is going to be withheld from khair. We don't know what this khair is. Some sort of khair that the child is going to be prevented from if we don't perform aqiqah. So in order for us to release and uh, remove this um, restriction, we need to perform aqiqah so that the child can attain this khair that is be being withheld. طيب. So from the first two hadith so far, it seems like it's wajib because the person kullu ghulam, every child, and he's mentioned fa'ahriqu, he's commanding. However, the, the third hadith now here is what takes and brings down the obligation to being a sunnah, sunnah mu'akkada, a highly emphasized sunnah, as we see. And this is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhuma. Anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man wulida lahu walad, whoever is given a child, fa'ahabba an yansuk anhu fal yansuk, and he wishes to uh, sacrifice on his behalf, then let him sacrifice. Wa ma'na yansuk yadbah, and the meaning of yansuk is to slaughter. So whoever has been blessed with a new baby, فَأَحَبَّ أَنْ يَنْسُكَ And he wishes to sacrifice, then let him sacrifice. So here we see that the Prophet ﷺ, he has referred the issue of slaughtering back to a person's wish. If you wish, then let him do it. This is what the scholars, the most of the scholars who have said that a sunnah mu'akkada use to bring down the uh, evidences which indicate obligation. They bring it down to a sunnah al-mu'akkada. Tayyib. And also from this, we benefit another name of aqiqa. Some of the scholars, they mentioned that another name of aqiqa is nasika, taken from this hadith. Yansuka, fal yansuk. Whoever wishes to sacrifice an animal, then let him sacrifice. Another name given to aqiqa is nasika. Nasika. This hadith was reported by Abu Dawood, wa Nasai, wa Ahmad, and it's authenticated by Sheikh Albani. So we've covered now the ruling of aqiqa. The ruling of aqiqa is that it's sunnah mu'akkada because if you combine the evidences together, those which indicate obligation and there are those which indicate that it is uh, given back to a person's wish, drawn back to a person's wish, we get the result, the conclusion that it is sunnah mu'akkada. As for the timing, the timing for offering the aqiqa, waqtul aqiqa, the authors they say, يَدْخُلُ وَقْتُ جَوَازِ ذَبْحِ الْعَقِيقَةِ بِانْفِصَالِ جَمِيعِ الْمَوْلُودِ عَمْ مِنْ بَطْنِ أُمِّهِ The timing for the permissibility of slaughtering the aqiqa begins. So this is وَقْتُ الْجَوَاز. The timing for the permissibility of offering the aqiqa, slaughtering the aqiqa, begins once the child has fully exited the mother's womb. Once the child is exited completely from the mother, this is when it's permissible to slaughter. From this stage onwards, you are allowed to slaughter. وَيَسْتَمِرُ وَقْتُ الْإِسْتِحْبَابِ إِلَى الْبُلُوغ And the time for the recommendation to slaughter an aqiqa continues from that time onwards until the child reaches bulugh, reaches adulthood. And the reason why they mention adulthood is because all of the evidences they mention غُلَام, walad. Those words, they refer to a child before reaching adulthood. So because of those uh, wordings in those hadith which refer to a child, that's why they say the timing for uh, the recommendation to slaughter starts from when the child comes out until it reaches adulthood. So this is the timing for the permissibility of slaughtering. إِلَّا أَنَّهُ يُسَنُّ أَنْ يُعَقَّ عَنْهُ يَوْمَ السَّابِعِ مِنْ وِلَادَتِهِ However, the preferred time for offering the sacrifice for offering this aqiqa is yawm al the seventh day after the child is born. And that is due to the hadith of Samur radiallahu anhu, which is the above hadith here, kullu ghulam rahinatun bi aqiqati tudba anhu yawm al It is to be slaughtered on the seventh day. This is the hadith of Samura 
they've mentioned here another wording of the hadith and that is that the prophet said al ghulam murtahan bi aqiqatihi the child is held in ransom for for its aqiqa or by its aqiqa tudbah anhu yawm al sabi' which is slaughtered on its seventh day wa yusamma and is named wa yuhlaqu ra'suhu and its hair is shaved on that same day the seventh day so this indicates to us that the preferred time to slaughter the aqiqa on behalf of the child is on the seventh day after the child is born how do we calculate the seventh day? Shaykh Uthaymin rahimahullah he mentions that we count from the day that the child is born. We include the first day that it's born. So if it was born on Monday, we'd count Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So on Sunday, this is the preferred time for offering the aqiqah. And this is the day where the child is given the name officially and its head is shaven. طيب بارك الله فيكم. This is our lesson for today. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك شهد الله لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك.